Hello, everybody. As you're filtering in, welcome to the webinar series with the College of Natural Science and Mathematics here at the University of Toledo, I guess virtually with the University of Toledo. Um, we're going to get started in just a couple of minutes, give everybody time to log into their Zooms. We all know how Zoom works. Occasionally it does. Uh, so we're going to make sure everyone has a chance to get in and get their mics turned off and and get settled into their seats. Uh, whether you're coming here after school or work, we're so glad that you could join us. Uh, my name is Ryan Chernick. I'm a regional enrollment manager with the University of Toledo. So I recruit students from the greater DC area, Maryland, Virginia, as well as the South and the East Coast, a lot of places. Um, but for tonight, I will be the admissions representative to answer some more of your broad questions. But you are here to learn more about the College of Natural Science and Mathematics. And specifically for this evening, we're talking about research in the University of Toledo. Uh, we do have one of these webinars scheduled for the first Thursday of every month until April. So if you would also like to learn about maybe some of the careers that our alumni go into or some more about our student organizations, check out the website, utoledo.edu. Uh, on the visit page, you can see all the different webinar series with the College of Natural Science and Mathematics. We're going to give everybody just one more minute to kind of filter in uh, out of the waiting room. This is already a great crew, though. Uh, I appreciate everyone having their mics turned off. Um, if you have questions, please feel free to put those into the chat, and I'll make sure that they get asked. Uh, we are going to do a Q&A session kind of after each presentation. So if you have questions either broadly about the University of Toledo science community, the research being done on campus, or specific questions about the research that the professors are talking about, please feel free to ask those. We want this to be interactive. We want you to get mm -hmm. out of this as much as you possibly can so you can have a good idea of what it means to do undergraduate research at the University of Toledo. Uh, with that being said, our waiting room is now empty. So we're gonna go ahead and officially get started. So if you're just joining us again, my name is Ryan Chernick. I work in the Office of Undergraduate Admission. Thank you all so much for joining us this, this evening. Uh, we are in conversation with the College of Natural Science and Mathematics about their research and sort of the research opportunities in general at the University of Toledo. And to have this conversation, we have two awesome professors <laughs> joining us. We have Miss Heather Conti, who is joining us, uh, and Emanuela Gianfrido as well. Uh, both are here to kind of talk about the university's research endeavors, their particular interests in, in kind of how it relates to all of you as prospective undergraduate students with the University of Toledo. If you have questions, like I said, please feel free to put them in the chat and we will start up that official Q&A once everyone's done with their presenting. But with that being said, I wanna throw it over to my good friend and yours, uh, Dr. Conti. <laughs> All right, hi everyone. I'm actually just gonna start sharing my screen right away. So All right, hopefully we're all good. Um, first, thank you for, for having me. Um, this, this, I want this to be a lot of fun. Please ask questions. Um, I'm gonna go through some slides, um, maybe rather quickly, it'll, it'll seem, um, but ask questions at the end, that'd be really great. I did wanna take a moment though um, to just mention that, you know, as we all know, this has been a, a really crazy year. And um, I just, my hope is that everyone is remaining healthy, both physically and mentally. And if you are feeling particularly stressed, um, please reach out to your, right, your, your circle of, of um, right, your, your people um, and, and, and get the help you need. Um, and I, I mean that genuinely, um, you know, even for prospective students, right, we, we care and, Hopefully you are going to be in NSM. Some of you are hopefully bio students and some of you may even be in my lab. And I just, from the get go, I want everyone to know that, you know, everyone here at U Toledo really cares about your health and well being. Um, so Ryan, you know, kind of introduced me. Um, I'm, I'm Heather Conti. I'm an associate professor in biological sciences, but I also wear the hat of Director of Undergraduate Research Experiences for Biological Sciences. So I'm also talking to you um, 
from that perspective as well. So general questions, you know, absolutely. And, and we'll talk a little bit about um, what goes on in, in our lab. I have with me one of my undergraduate students, um, Nicholas Huss. Um, hopefully you know, he can chime in and, and answer any of your questions as well. And especially if I, I forget anything. Um, so I'll go on. So, all right, I, I said, you guys, everyone's stressed out. Um, right, everything is crazy, um, and you know you're at the point where you have to make some really important decisions in your life, even with everything going on, and you know finishing up high school and and deciding the next step and, and what's best for you. And and I hope that tonight helps you with that, that that you get some information that you can make an informed decision, and that you Toledo right is that choice. Um, so. You're all interested in science, so I can assume that everyone understands the importance of research. And maybe, you know, kind of less obvious as you're making this choice is where is the best place to go to do that research you know, as far as you know, university or college? And I just want to explain a little bit about what a research university is and how I think U Toledo is the best choice. So a research university is committed, right, there's a definition, so to speak, is committed to research as a central part of its mission. And what that means is to be designated a research university, you need to confer at least 20 research scholarship doctorates. So we train PhD students and you have to spend a certain, your university has to spend a certain amount of money on research, right? You probably don't care too much about that, but what that means is we are generating research. Okay? We're asking questions, we're studying a specific problem, designing experiments, carrying those experiments out. And importantly for you is we're producing those graduate students and undergraduate students. So at a research university, as opposed to a, a liberal arts a college, you are going to have research opportunities here and interact with faculty and grad students uh, daily. And I do want to, to make a special note that, and it's true for the whole college, you know, all of our departments, but the biology faculty are, are committed to engaging undergraduates in our lab, right? It's a kind of a special mission for us as well. So, right, what, why is research important um, at, you know, as an undergrad? And I, I think, Right, you're all, as I mentioned, interested in, in, in science. Um, and, and I would venture to guess that a lot of you are interested in professional school after um, your undergrad, right? Medical school, dental school, hopefully getting your PhD. Um, so you know that doing research as an undergrad is it's a great resume builder, right? You need to, to, to kind of have that under your belt, it makes you marketable um, for employment as well. Um, but hopefully you recognize that it goes beyond that, right? It's not, not just a box to check, but that hands-on authentic research really is the best way to learn science. Um, when do you start looking for research opportunities as an undergrad? Right, tomorrow, email me, um, but, but really early, right? The best, best um, time is um, to start, you know, as soon as you set foot on campus, um, you start to get a feel for, for your classes, how things work. Um, there's really, there's really no wrong time. And I think you know, in our department, we can make anything work for a student. And I think it's, it's fine for a student to, to be intrigued by research at, at any point. But since you're here, right, and, and I know you're, you're getting ready, it is best to start early. There are limited research opportunities and um, you need to start looking early for those. Um, in our department, you know, different ways to do this. Um, you know, how can you find these research opportunities? Reach out to me, you know, that's kind of my, my job as, as a director um, to do that. I, I speak with several students every week about um, research opportunities. You'll hear me in the NSM 1000 courses that you'll take uh, as freshmen uh, talking again about research. 
And also, you know, you can start to do some homework now and, and check out our faculty's um, research. And a, an easy way to do that, and, and these are all static, so hopefully you'll be able to get the, the links later. Um, but start to familiar, familiarize yourself with the research in the department. Um, you can go to our, our website, check out our faculty um, research page. Um, maybe, maybe not. Um, and there you'll find um, bios for all of the faculty in our department. If you click on a particular faculty, right, you click on mine, our faculty research will come up. Usually there's a, a little kind of a more basic blurb about our, our research, a little bit easier to understand. Sometimes there's a list of our publications, some current students, some current projects. Um, but it's a good way to, to start to learn about some of the things that go on in our department as far as research goes. If you look beyond our department, um, right? So hopefully um, Emanuela talks about her particular department and how to find opportunities, but you can also um, seek the help of the Office of Undergraduate Research, which is a university-wide office. And this also, I mean, this really sets um, U Toledo apart in that we have an office dedicated to finding you research opportunities. And as I I'll talk later, pay you for those research opportunities. Um, so you can also go to their website, check out um, anything that they have there. They have some opportunities listed that are on our health science campus, our, our med campus. Um, so they're a little bit more broad, even if you're not um, a bio student. Um, and yeah, so this is, there's also some really good information there about finding a mentor. Hopefully I'll give you a few things. I'm going to go through kind of the typical student in my lab and hopefully it gives you ideas to think about what would be the right research home for you. But they have some information at this um, website as well about finding a mentor, um, how to develop an idea once you're um, in that lab, developing a proposal, and then I'll talk later about trying to get that proposal funded. So, okay, you you go through, you find thing, you find research that's interesting to you. So the next thing you would do is you know, kind of obviously, but reach out to faculty, um, right? Make make that email personalized, what, you know, make us feel like our research is the most important thing in the world, right? You read about it, you, you know, even if you didn't understand something, you know, talk, you know, say you're really interested in further studying this, you know, something like that. And then how, as a student, you stand out. Um, and um, if you have any questions, um, you can ask me um, about that and, and how that's important. Um, and I think the big thing is um, don't give up. And if you don't find a, a research opportunity uh, as a freshman, um, it's okay. Um, there may be some in the in the crowd who are interested in in being part of the honors college. If you have questions about that, we can we can answer those as well. Um, again, right? It's. When I say start early, it's not to cause anybody stress. Um, it's to, to inform you um, and that'll hopefully make things a little bit easier for you um, to find research opportunities. Okay, so the way I decided to, to kind of walk you through research is right, I'm obviously most acquainted with the research in, in my lab, right? Research in the Conti lab. Um, so I'm gonna walk you through what a um, kind of what our lab looks like, um, what a typical undergrad would do in our, our lab, and, and as they progress through their time at U Toledo. And first, of course, a couple disclaimers, right? This semester, this year is very different. Um, you know, it, it's tough um, you know, to socially distance in life, let alone in the small confines of, of a lab. Um, so, right, things are, are different right now. Um, and also want to mention that all labs are different. And I, I'm going through mine and giving you some details so that you can think about the things that are important to you. And then hopefully that makes your search easier as well. Um, so within our lab, it's me, right, the PI, one that pretends to be in charge. 
um, we have one postdoc, so that's someone with their PhD who's um, doing research, you know, postdoctoral research. Um, currently, I have three graduate students. One is a master's student and two are PhD students. And then at any given time, I have about 10 undergraduates in the lab. And not all of them are honors. That's also a really important thing to me. I think research is for everybody, not just the students that are, are in the honors college. And it's important to expose everyone to research to whatever degree they're, they're able to. So but that's one thing to think about. We have a big lab, maybe that's not right for you. Um, but that's something to think about when you start to, to find opportunities. We, um, we study, and I'm not gonna really go into the science too much. I would love to, um, but don't really have the time. If you have questions, please ask. Um, but we study the immune response to fungal infections. Um, and, and normally these are fungal infections that healthy people like you and I don't get, but patients with certain immune defects or, or problems in fighting infections would get the, this particular type of fungal infection. So it's really relevant to health and disease. Maybe that's not your, your jam, right? Maybe you want to um, work with plants. We have a couple investigators in the department that do that. Um, maybe you want to work with flies, right? We have, we have someone in the lab that does that. Um, I work with mice. Maybe that's not, you know, something that you're interested in. So that's also something to, to think about and, and gather some more details about the model that, that um, is used in that lab and if you feel comfortable with it. So if you are an undergrad in my lab, right, there's, there's kind of a, a, a timeline and, and this can vary depending on when you enter the lab. Um, but normally if I take a freshman, in the beginning, at least the first semester, it's going to be on a volunteer basis. And that student is going to learn some common lab duties, learn how the lab runs, learn if they like our lab, right? It's, I say a probationary period, but that sounds way too scary, right? It's like somebody's going to get in trouble at the end of it. But it's, it's really just to try each other out. Um, you might not like a big lab, you may end up not liking a big lab, or you may end up not liking the research we do. Um, so we usually start off slow. Also, as a freshman, it's really important to, I believe, um, get a good solid academic foundation. And that means you need to do well in your classes and, and get good grades. Um, and, and sometimes that's hard to do if you're in the lab a lot. Um, and then eventually, right, that, that um, undergrad is going to start to work directly with the grad student, conducting experiments, hopefully then independently. And then as time progresses, that undergrad really starts to work on their own research project. It really falls under the umbrella of probably a, a grad student's um, project, but you, you're independent um, for the most part in the lab. And our senior, students, if you walked into my lab, it would be almost impossible to tell the difference between a grad student and one of my undergrads. Um, and then hopefully we have many opportunities um, within the, the department, at the college level, and we're also really committed to, to sending our students to, to national meetings as well. So that's another really good um, opportunity that we offer. Um, where you can present your, your findings at these conferences. Um, hopefully, right, it doesn't always work out this way, um, but many times there are um, opportunities to be included on publications. Hopefully, depending on your independence, you're, you're conducting experiments that are important um, to not only um, the, the grad students projects, but just as the, the kind of the lab in, in general. Um, as an example, I have a current publication that we're, we're getting out right now that that does have three of my um, current um, undergrads on it. It doesn't always happen, but it's, it's a, a nice perk. Um, and then if you are an honors student, you know, by your senior year, you would be completing your honors thesis, writing that up and, and submitting it. Then you're done, um, right? You graduate, we've made you really marketable. You're gonna get a great job or you're going to get into professional school if that's your choice. And um, 
in my lab, you know, I started in 2005, so I've, I've had over 30 students kind of come and go through through the lab and, and to stay for very long time. But if we consider um, 16 of the students um, that were, I would say, rather committed, right? Started early and, and worked through most of the time that they were there. Um, nine um, went, are either in medical school or, or have been accepted at medical and dental school. And I do want to mention that two um, did receive major tuition scholarships for med, for med school, right? Tuition scholarships, full tuition paid. Um, so that's something um, that I, I think our, our department um, can really do well is prepare um, med students for clinical research and, and that's recognized. Um, and then four of, of those 16 students are in either PhD or master's programs. And I guess right, that's the math doesn't add up. A couple are currently waiting to hear back. Um, they've had some interviews at, at med schools. Also want to quick mention um, that throughout that time, you can also be doing research for credit and you should, right? You should get credit um, for, for your research. Um, and that would be biology 4910 for us. Um, also, research can look very different and how you get involved in research in our department can look very different. And we have some really great courses um, to take along the way to get you ready to do independent research. We have biology 3910, which is more of a, a research project lab, like a class lab. Um, that's a really great opportunity and then also, right, last thing I um, kind of want to mention is you can get paid to do research. And that brings us back to um, the Office of Undergraduate Research that offers competitive summer fellowships. So it looks good to get these fellowships, of course, and then you also um, can get paid um, as well. And again, you would go back to, to that Office of Undergraduate Research page um, where, where they have develop a proposal, a for funding. And this is something that you do um, working really closely with your mentor um, and helping you write that proposal. But it's, it's a really good opportunity to really dive into to the research um, and really understand it. And, and I, I think get the most out of your experience. Yeah. And that's just a little bit more information. When you go there yourself, you can, you can check it out. All right, so I really want to leave some time. I, I've probably gone over way longer than I should have. So I, I want to leave some time for questions, um, especially with Nick here, if, if he's able to um, answer any as well. Yes, we already have some questions that have come in, so we can awesome. jump right into them. Uh, and I'll open it, you know, any of the panelists can feel free to jump in, please. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. So the first question we had come in uh, is how many hours in a week do undergraduate students usually dedicate to research? Do they decide or does the PI decide? Yeah, so, so that's actually, you know, that's something that you want. It varies. First, I'll start off by saying it varies. Um, it does vary by PI. Um, you know, they there are some PIs that that will expect you to be in the lab, you know, 15, 20 hours a week. Um, but um, I do it more on a, you know, the, the longer you're in the lab, um, you know, probably the, the more hours you should be there. Um, but again, everyone does it differently. And, and if you're doing it for credit, so if you're doing it for the biology 4910, a good rule of thumb is, you know, if you're doing it for one credit, you should be in the lab for three hours, two credits, six, three, nine. Um, but again, remember I mentioned um, that you really can't tell the difference between a senior undergrad in my lab and a grad student. So our senior undergrads, I mean, they're in the lab all the time, um, you know, I, I, I don't know, you know, 15 to 20 hours at least. Um, but again, I recognize how important it is to get good grades. Um, and, and the volunteers, you know, as an example, the volunteers in our lab, they're just there for a couple hours a week. But again, it varies. 
Awesome. Did anybody else want to add anything else about their labs or any any different differences across the university and different departments? I can add a little bit if that's okay. Um, so I'm an undergraduate in Dr. Conti's lab. And uh, initially, I probably put in a few hours a week um, doing a lot of the basic uh, skills that you need to learn to be a productive person in lab. And now since I'm doing more and more projects, the time commitment's a little bit more, but I kind of just look at my schedule, see how much I'm able to accomplish and work closely with the grad students. And they're really, they're great. The grad students are great. They understand they've been there before and their understanding of what life is like as an undergrad. So uh, the time commitment is pretty flexible in our lab, but um, that was always a concern when I was kind of in your shoes in high school. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, and I don't, I don't believe I did this introduction at the beginning, uh, but Dr. Uh, Tamer Avador uh, Ross is also here. Uh, and so if you wanted to come off and talk a little bit about your lab also in, in the biology department. So I, I can say some uh, few points. So we are an example of a lab that do a little bit different research. We work, for example, with fly that Heather mentioned, but we also work now with rabbit. So that's another thing to understand. Science is very diverse. There are many different things and you can find in a lab uh, different things to do. So for example, our approach that somebody come to this early stage, they're kind of shopping around. Yeah, for the first semester, mm -hmm. they're shopping around. Do I want to work with flies? Do I want to work with rabbit? Do I want to do clinical work? We also have research with bovine. So do you, I want to work with research on that? So that's another thing, another flexibility that, that you have. Uh, I want to stress what uh, Heather said, reach out to faculty. Faculty are nice people. They want to help. Yeah, it's some people think that they are intimidating. They are not. They really want, they are all about research. They want to help you reach out to them early. Uh, I have students that right now reaching me in your situation that already investigating about that. Some students come in the third year. That's also, they don't mm -hmm. be stressed. You don't need yeah. to act right now. There is no need to do it right now. If you feel it's right for you, go for it. If it's not, come later. That's also good. And I want to stress that we think science is very important and we are welcoming as a priority for us. So feel free to contact us, any one of us. Yeah, and I don't want to, to say that I don't take a student. Um, I definitely take students that are you know, seniors already, right? Maybe they've finally realized how important research is or, or you want to get some experience. And those students are in the lab for just a couple hours a week, right? We're very, like Tomer said, we're very accommodating, um, at least in our department. Awesome. So uh, move on to the next question. Uh, and this is again, kind of a, a broader one. Um, does the university do any research with cancer or cancer cells? This student is interested in oncology and research involving cancer uh, and the ways that cells metastasize interest them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have, um, that's a strong, um, strong area of research in our department, e even, you know, even as a biological sciences department. And, and I think that, like Tomer said, I think that's one of the um, strong suits of our department is the diversity. But yeah, we have, uh, you know, at least three or four investigators um, that would be considered cancer biologists in our department. And then on the health science campus, there's um, the cancer program as well. Um, and um, there are definitely investigators that, that welcome undergraduates in their lab. Awesome. Uh, this one is a, a general college question. And, I, and I'll throw this out there real quick. I love these kinds of questions because no, no one in this room that aside from the you know, faculty and the current students has been to college. So, so don't feel like you should know all these things automatically. Um, yeah. All of this is something you learn along the way. So if everyone who has these degrees could talk about it, um, what's it like getting a PhD or a master's degree? A I lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I meant to jump in on that. And like, you need to think about your studies are each step helps you specialize in something. Mm -hmm. So undergraduate studies are aimed to give you the type of general knowledge, the fundamentals that will help you to move ahead. Mm 
right, with a job in industry or elsewhere, or we or with master or PhD. So what happened in the master or PhD, not only you develop the fundamentals of the science that you're doing, but you also develop the know-how and you develop that uh, critical thinking that will put you a step ahead of people that have an undergraduate degree or in case of PhD, people that have a master degree. So you need to think uh, as a, um, like as a pyramid, like at the base you have your undergraduate you learn everything or almost everything you need to learn about the basics then you do master and you learn, learn a little bit more about a specific topic okay and you learn how maybe apply that topic to um, everyday problems that we might have in the world and then you go for a phd where you further specialize in a discipline and then you become phd means doctor of philosophy it means like you are you're supposed at the end of your PhD to be an expert in the field you are studying. So it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of commitment and a lot of resilience, but the outcomes, they are, they are fantastic for if you are uh, enthusiastic about what you do. And I also wanna mention, right, when I talked about a research university, here you will see right you'll have you know if that is something that you aspire to you'll know whether or not that's a good fit because you're going to work hand in hand with master's students and phd students um so I, I think that that's actually a really good opportunity awesome thank you uh we're going to probably just do one or two more questions then we'll jump into emanuela's uh presentation because i know you know we only we only have a little less than an hour um, but this is all awesome. These are all great questions. And again, please feel free to reach out. If there's questions you want to ask out loud, you can direct message me and I will ask them anonymously for you. Or feel free to email these fine folks here in the college. Uh, and they'd be more than happy to give you some more insight into their programs and the university as a whole. Um, the question came in, uh, have you ever had an undergraduate publish their research? So yeah, I, I, I mentioned that, um, right? Everyone, um, you know, within our department, because we have, we work so closely with undergraduates and we have so many in our labs. Um, I, I think it just, there. Uh, yeah, there's undergraduates that are included on publications. Um, I've had, um, I, I gave the example of the one, you know, I have three on, on that. Um, I had another publication, but yeah, I mean, that that's, our, that's how we create data here is is through undergrad. So yeah, you, you will definitely end up on publications. And I know Emmanuel can talk about chemistry, right? That That's a little bit different than um, biology and, and especially me as an immunologist. It's, it's a little bit of a different um, flavor to the publications. Um, so she can answer that for, for chemistry, but but absolutely, right? We We would grind to a halt if we didn't have our undergrads. And, and we got a little bit of a flavor of that um, during the pandemic, right? When we didn't have undergrads in the lab, you know, we, we you see who's important <laughs> and it was the undergrads. Yeah, maybe I can add one thing about that because this is really important. As the researchers here in UT, you are going to uncover the unknown. That's what you're going to do. You're going to participate in, in this discovery process. And uh, I can give a, I want to give an example of a student. He was an undergrad in the lab. He was author on two papers. He then, he was so excited about the research, he stayed for a master. And then he wrote a cover, he wrote a paper that became a cover on a highly impactful uh, journal. Uh, this paved the way for him to get an MD, PhD, full ride uh, scholarship. So, we appreciate if you are interested to go to this level, you could go, but it's not necessary. Yeah, it's your choice how much you want to invest in the business. Yeah, and I do want to mention that the two students that got the full tuition scholarship for med school, they were also the two students that had publications. So, and you're not going to get to that point, right, if you don't start early, right? Start early in a lab you're doing authentic hands-on research, um, but it takes a while to, to develop those skills, so. 
So I have one more question for the whole group while, while I have everybody, and then we will, we will turn it over to Emanuela, uh, who I promise, I know I keep saying that, but the, we have some excellent questions this evening. Um, and I, I like asking this one, uh, and I'm, I apologize if anyone's answered it before, um, but why do you all, and why in general do people choose to teach at the University of Toledo? Um, why do people come here and why do they wanna be part of the university from the faculty and the educator's perspective. And then Nicholas, I know you don't teach at the university, so maybe you could give the perspective of why you decided to come to the university as a young uh, scientist. So feel free to answer that however you'd like, maybe with some brevity because we do have to keep going, but I think it's an important question. I mean, I, I feel that it's my duty Right, this is, I've been given so many opportunities in life. Um, and I just feel like it's my duty to train the next generation of scientists and clinicians. And it's, you can't do that everywhere. Here, you can do that with undergrads and really feel like you're making a difference. Yeah, I can just follow up exactly what the Heather said. I had a great mentor when I was an undergrad and I just, uh, really appreciate uh, uh, her for doing that. And I just try to mimic what she's doing. And I learned that you could, uh, uh, somebody that does not know about science, many of you don't know, it's very, it's, very, it's very different from what you think it is actually. And then a mentor come and take you. And the relationship in the lab is a mentor and a mentee. It's not a professor and a student. It's very different. We are going to take you through all when there are problems and issues and misconception and all the problems We'll do it. I think it's fantastic for me as a person. I just love it. I got the same thing from before. So I think it's a great opportunity for being in this possibility. Well, being a student, uh, I thought Toledo was basically the perfect size because a lot of times you could go to UVM or some huge schools around the country and you don't get the same opportunities as you do at the University of Toledo. Like I got to walk into Dr. Connie's lab, I think last January, and she gave me a full list, personalized conversation, trying to figure out what would be best for me, what would be the best lab for me to work in. And uh, I don't think if I went to a larger institution that would necessarily be the case. Uh, especially from a professor working in a research lab. And then the University of Toledo also is big enough where we are, everyone kind of knows where we're at um, in the country and we do have a name for ourselves. So as a scientist, as a young scientist, I really do love the University of Toledo and it provides so many great opportunities. And I would, if I were you, seriously consider the research aspect of the University of Toledo, and then the whole, the university is a great one, and it provides so many great opportunities for you. And then I think, Emanuela, if you would like to answer, you know, in whatever capacity you'd like, and then go ahead and just jump right yeah. into to your yeah. presentation, uh, that would be fantastic. So the reason I moved from another country to join the University of Toledo, so it was a very well thought decision. The reason why I moved to the University of Toledo, why I chose to, to join the University of Toledo is because I loved how interdisciplinary our university is. So we are in the College of Natural Science and Mathematics, but our college, our university also has College of Pharmacy, College of Engineering, Health Campus, and these are disciplines that us as a scientist can uh, use to create collaborations how this translates in a benefit for undergraduate research is that if you are um, students in our college and you are interested in some aspect of for example I, I don't know like medical aspect some of our labs they have active collaboration with our medical campus uh, some of our lab have active collaboration with the engineering campus or uh, with engineering college or the pharmacy college so that's what I like the most about like the University of Toledo and following up to what Nicola said that I believe it's a great point. University of Toledo is a great size university. If we were 
a smaller size university, maybe we wouldn't have all the facilities that we have to provide the undergraduates with uh, research opportunity. If we were a bigger university, maybe because of the numbers, the ratio between students and uh, um, professors, not many students will have the opportunity to join research lab. So again, I think the, the, for undergraduate research, the size of our university, it's, uh, it's ideal. Uh, going like talking a little bit more in specific about what's the research uh, like in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. First of all, also within the chemistry and biochemistry field, our department has tons of research opportunity that are in completely different fields of chemistry meaning we have uh, research about materials going on, research about synthesis, um, like research about bioanalysis, research about green chemistry, biochemistry. So every student that join our department really has a broad choice of research topics that can choose. Um, a little bit more, actually something also that I want to, to tell in general about how to choose undergraduate research and why to do that, is that like if you are passionate about a topic, you can go on our website, as Dr. Conti mentioned, and check what are the, the research interests of each faculty. For example, like in my lab, I'm an analytical chemist. Chemist. This means that we do research uh, in order to measure molecules or ions or everything that is chemistry, chemistry related in the environment or like in a biological system, in food samples and so on and so forth. So even within my group, I have some students that work on environmental analysis, some students that work on bioanalysis, some students that can do research in food analysis and, and so on. So find what you are passionate about and then look for the PI that can give you the research opportunity that is closest to your interest. I'm saying this because doing research it doesn't mean showing up in the lab for a couple of hours a week. I mean, you can do that, but on top of that, you need to have the driving force that bring you to the lab. It's not easy for an undergrad student to do research because it's a lot of time commitment. And this also a lot of mental commitment. You guys have courses, you guys have a lot of activities. Doing research is an extra and that if you do it with passion, will teach you so much. Like something that I always tell to my students is that everything you do in the lab, try to connect it with the material you study in your classes. If you listen to your professor one day in classes talking about instrumental analysis, like how uh, instruments are able to measure molecules, right? Maybe you can listen to that, studying it for the exam, and then next day you have forgotten. But if you apply that knowledge to the research lab, that is going to really stick in your brain, and you won't be able to forget it for a long time. So this applies to chemistry. This applies, I believe, uh, to all the, the discipline in science, uh, and it correlated with, the, with research. So don't just join the lab because you need that research credit or as Dr. Conti mentioned, because you want to tick the box. That's not how it works. Also, you need to remember that each PI welcoming new students in un undergraduate students in the lab, they make a huge commitment. They invest a lot of resources in you because they need to train you from the scratch. And they like this also show like in, in our college and I believe in other college in our university, how committed we are to your success. There are university that they don't do graduate research. 
Uh, I want to mention an example of one of our graduate students that was admitted to the Columbia Medical College. So in the chemistry and biochemistry department, we get a lot of undergraduate students that are pre-med, meaning they want to become medical doctor or veterinary or dentist in the future. In order to do that, the, the admission process for med school is very competitive. So you need to have you need to have a good CV. Uh, you need to have a lot of uh, good grades, but also, if possible, research experience, publication to be admitted. So one of our students was admitted to Columbia Medical College, one of the best in the country. I talked to her recently because also what we like to do, we like to keep in contact with our students that we send out in the world, right? We want to, we want to know their success and we are very proud to share the story of success for our students. So she was telling me that in her class, she's from the University of Toledo, but in her class, she has people coming from Stanford, from Harvard, all this fancy school in the US. She told me they never had the research opportunities that I had at the University of Toledo. And for this, I'm immensely grateful to the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry and the University of Toledo. The reason why they don't have research opportunities is because those big school, they have so many undergrad that they cannot host all of them in research lobby. So, if you really are passionate about what you want to do and based on what are your um, scope uh, in life, like what do you want to do after you, grad after you get your undergraduate research, uh, sorry, your undergraduate degree, doing research and doing focused research, it will really help you. So um, uh, I'd like to, do I have some time, five minutes more maybe? I'd like to uh, give uh, an example of the type of research that we do in my lab. And actually I have here connected with, we, with me one of my undergraduate researchers. Uh, her name is Toi Zhao. Toi, if you want to unmute yourself and uh, if you want to activate the video, if not, it's fine. So. I'm going to show today. Hi, Toy. Hello. <laughs> uh, I want to show, share. Let me see if this will work. Um, I hope you are able to see my slides. Real quick, I see some more questions coming in. Yeah. Uh, we will do more answers at the end. So yeah. if you're sending questions in, I'm not ignoring them. We will answer them later on. But Manuel, please continue. So as I mentioned, I am a, an analytical chemist, meaning I study new ways to measure molecules in samples. So one of our main projects that Toe is, um, is working on is how to analyze pesticides in human plasma. Why do we want to do that? We know that with the extensive use of pesticide, we in in the world we have that sometime this molecule can can enter the human body through air through food uh, and through uh, water contamination so it's very important to understand how this molecule travel through our body and how they reach uh, various organs reason being that what is a pesticide in the first place are subst substances that are usually used in agriculture to destroy insects of other organisms that are harmful to the crops. So we know that these molecules have an effect on insect and other organisms. That's what they were designed for. However, we also, like these the other researchers, also notice that when humans uptake these molecules, they can have some health effect. This type of research, although is not really developed yet because only recently some of the health, um, uh, some of the disease related to uh, pesticide exposure were unveiled. So now what we are doing with toy is want to find alternative method to measure if a person is contaminated by pesticides or not. In order to do that, we 
are developing very small probes, you can see in the slide, that are called solid phase microstruction. And to give you a um, uh, scale of how big this device is, it's no more than like maybe half inch or maybe one inch. And at the tip of this, uh, of this device, you have some chemicals that are able to capture those pesticides from the human plasma. So now the human plasma is a part of the blood and it's very complex in composition. So I always like to make uh, the example that finding a pesticide in the human plasma, it's like to find a drop, like is, uh, is, um, is like to take a drop of water from a uh, Olympic sized swimming pool. So you see how, how hard of a task it is. So that's the research, that's what the research in our lab does. Then once we get these pesticides from biofluids, from human plasma, how do we see them? How do we measure them? Well, in my lab, we use very advanced instrumentation that is called liquid chromatography and mass spectrometry that is able to tell us how many of these pesticides are there and how much of it. So the job of the undergraduate students in the, in the lab and for this project specifically, Toy's uh, job is to test if these methods that we have to extract the pesticides are really effective, how many pesticides we can see. Also, another advantage of doing research with this type of instrumentation is actually to learn how this instrumentation work. Meaning that, as I mentioned before, if you take a course about instrumental analysis, you will, you will learn the theory in the book then you come in the lab and you can apply. There is no best way to learn that topic. Also, something that is very important about uh, learning this type of instrumentation is that you are acquiring skills that will serve you very well after your degree. If you want to enter the job market directly, there are so many places that require this type of expertise. Think about the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency of the US. When they monitor pollutants in our environment, they use this type of instrumentation. So when they look for people to hire, they look for people that also have the skill of being able to handle this type of instrumentation. So there are like, don't think that undergraduate research is just uh, a way to like spend some time to do a hobby. It, it is good if it can also be a hobby and you can be passionate about it. But the repercussion of undergraduate research on your education, maybe you will appreciate later on in life when you get a job or when you get your PhD. And it's uh, extremely important. So now I leave it to Toy to share a little bit her, her experience, like working in my lab. Actually, Toe um, is the second semester that she works in my lab, and she was awarded with an undergraduate research fellowship. So to connect back to what Dr. Conti was saying, if you are very passionate about it and you work with your PI about writing a proposal for the research that you want to do, you can even be paid for it. And like, these are not opportunity that everybody has. And definitely if you come to our college, to the University of Toledo, these are opportunity that you should, shouldn't really miss. So now I'll, I, will leave, I will leave it to Toe to share a little bit her experience. Um, hello everyone. So my name is Toe, as Dr. Emanuela introduced. And I, this is my second semester working in um, her lab. And this is the opportunity to uh, conduct undergrad research is such an amazing opportunity. So for example, you can you may have learned in old chem in Gen Chem lab about um, mass spectrometry, about NMR, about um, all kind of equipment, but usually you would just get like a 
problem on a piece of paper trying to solve it. But um, having the uh, undergraduate research experience, you really get to actually understand about the theory um, of uh, those ex um, equipment and use it um, so often that the, the knowledge actually stick in your head. You don't really even have to like try to sit down and memorize it. You will get a working knowledge of it as you're working through the project uh, that you were assigned. And it's, it was so amazing. And don't, you don't have to worry too much about if you are good enough or if you are smart enough to be in an undergraduate research because everyone understand that um, you want to learn, you want to know more. And not only the, uh, the PI, but um, we, they, they, you can feel that, oh, they're professor. Uh, I don't feel that comfortable talking to them. But the um, graduate uh, student in your lab also are super, super friendly and super, super helpful. If you're um, uh, kind of scared of talking to a professor, you can talk to you, the graduate uh, student in your lab. They are absolutely amazing in helping you out with any of the problem. And I have learned a lot um, since I have been in her lab. And um, something um, you something you will know that you learn, but there will be things that you didn't know that you learn, but you will gradually gradually notice that oh you've learned this. Uh, for example, um, I still remember the first time that I have to read. Uh, I have to read a scientific paper. I was like, what is this? I don't really understand, but like throughout the course of um, doing research, you will get um, uh, your PI will introduce you to like various kind of um, paper handbook that you need to read for your research. And you will just gradually get comfortable with reading those kind of scientific paper. So I absolutely recommend doing graduate research if you have the chance to. Thank you so much, Toy. Actually, you said some very important things. Like you don't need to think that you need to know everything before you ask to do undergraduate research. I can tell you that as researchers, even us PI, we don't know everything. Like we are here to research. And if you look at the word research, it's like the search, meaning search again and again until you find the answers you want. So don't think I'm not good enough or I don't know enough. You will learn. That's the purpose of it. PhD students, master students, they don't have everything figured out before they apply for the program, right? So the only thing that you need to make sure you have is the commitment, the commitment and the passion to do your research. If you don't have that, then it's a little bit difficult. But once you have that, don't worry about the knowledge, you will build that up. And also something like Toy can confirm, like usually undergraduate research participate to group meetings, right? So they start to listen about how science is presented. They start to listen about to words that they didn't know about. So if you are, if you are smart about it, if you hear a word you don't know about, then you go and look for it, or you ask to the graduate students, what did you mean by that? So without even knowing, you will learn how to talk science. And this will really make the difference for your future career that can be industry or academia. Awesome. That is excellent. Thank you all so much. Uh, we are getting dangerously close to seven o'clock, which I know when we're supposed to be done, hopefully you all have time to answer some more questions, if that's all right, if I can steal a little more of your sure. Thursday evening. Okay, awesome. Because um, we have, again, some great questions coming in, make sure we get through all of them. But if there is, like I said earlier, some more in-depth answers you'd like to get, please feel free, feel free to reach out to these folks uh, to have more of a conversation. But the first question is, uh, are there any specific research opportunities that are collaborations with the medical college or can students start one with a professor uh, of their own? For example, this student's interested in rheumatoid arthritis. So is there any kind of research in that sort of realm? I would say like, you know, you never know what a PI does. Like the, 
very important thing is to talk with your PI. Because like, I have collaborations that maybe I, if they are not there on the website or maybe my undergraduate students don't know, but if our students come to me and say, look, I have this interest. I, I'd like to work in something medical related. I can come up, like I said, if I have a collaboration, say, like, okay, you can join my graduate students that is collaborating with this group in the medical campus. So the most important thing is like, have an interest, have a focus and talk with your PI. Even if I don't have that type of research, I can tell you, you know what? There is my colleague that is working on this. Why don't you go and talk to him if you have this specific interest? Yeah, I just wanna echo that, that science is truly collaborative. And I think because the, the med campus is, you know, a couple miles down the road, we think that there's a divide. And I think, you know, there are so many of us in the biological sciences, right, in a basic department that study diseases important to human, right, to human health and disease uh, systems. Um, so we have, I mean, I have a ton of collaborations um, with um, different investigators on the health science campus. Um, but the, the question was also, yeah, you can do research with investigators on the health science campus exclusively. Absolutely, they're always looking for undergrads. It doesn't have to be a direct collaboration with somebody from your home um, department, you know, anyone from bio or, or chem or anything like that. Um, if you are interested in rheumatoid arthritis, I study the protein that's implicated in, in that disease. So you can reach out to me. I, I, don't, per, I don't study it right now as it relates to, to rheumatoid arthritis, but I do study um, the protein that's bad in that disease. So. Awesome. Thank you. A little plug. And yeah, right there. <laughs> Perfect. That's what it's all about. Promoting, promoting, and getting you all more undergraduate researchers. Uh, so another student writes in, um, if we start early and volunteer at a research lab, but have no previous lab experience, will it be trained and mentored in order to actually be able to help? Oh, yes. <laughs> right. I mean, it's, yeah, right, right. We are, um, the lab is really well regulated. Um, first, you receive all the training that you need and that's university wide, right? We have to make sure that if you are a lab that works with a particular pathogen or a particular chemical or, or anything like that, that you receive the proper training. So you are never just thrown into a lab. I mean, that would be really bad on, on the part of a PI. <laughs> um, but yeah, you, I mean, you receive so much one-on-one -on -one training. Absolutely. Yep. And, and honestly, like Emanuela said, you, you don't have to know anything. You just have to be really passionate about science. And, and I think you don't even you know, have to be passionate about research to, to realize that it's important. And then once you get into that lab, I mean, sometimes you just right? It just becomes a really important part of your life. So there's many ways to kind of get to, to that, you know, to have a research experience. So. Awesome. And then we have one more question that, that has been written in for this evening. Uh, and that is, what are some of the characteristics of students who are working with research that help them succeed? So some of the characteristics that help undergraduate researchers, you know, be successful in, in the lab and maybe more broadly in their, in their academic career? I would say curiosity. Uh, I think curiosity drives knowledge because if you see something and you are curious to know how that works, you go and study for it. And I think this is like, this is the right, the right um, spirit that an undergraduate research uh, ha needs to have. Of course, if you are curious, that will drive you to be in the lab and to try to learn. If you make a mistake, where did I make the mistake, right? There is a different attitude about making a mistake and getting like, okay, I made a mistake. I'm just reporting you, I made a mistake. And you, like the students ask the PI or the uh, graduate students, what did I do wrong? And then another attitude is that, okay, I make a mistake. Let me sit 
and think what I did and where I made a mistake, why I made that mistake and how to solve it. That's the scientific process. It's not not making mistake. People that do not make mistake, they don't learn. There is no progress without mistakes. What really makes the difference is the willingness and the curiosity to learn from your mistakes. So don't also, when you join a lab, don't be scared about making mistake. Of course, be careful because like doing research is expensive, but like, don't be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> to make mistake and think about those mistakes you make and even like in group meetings like sometimes at all like it happens to undergraduate and graduate students said oh i make the mistake and i thought about it i think i can redo that experiment in in a different way and this is this is research this is basically what research is also another factor as i say is like curiosity passion resilience and like you need to show your PI for for your PI to invest time, money, commitment on you, you need to show that you are interested. Your PI shouldn't chase you said, Oh, I didn't see you this week in the lab. Where are you? Can you come and do an experiment? Doesn't work. You need to show up. You need to show up when or even when you are not asked to, because if you are there, and another student does something, you are observing that and you are learning from that. And, and I think I 100% agree. I, I was going to say something more practical and and, and say time management. Mm -hmm. That's a really good skill. I think if you're going to balance academics and research, but um, really good points. Um, and, and I think that Actually, I don't remember exactly what I was going to say. So I'm going to stick with time management. <laughs> That's a very good point. <laughs> yeah, I've totally lost. See, right? Totally lost what I was going to say. <laughs> well, time oh, management seems like good, time management seems a good place to end because we have right, a right. Over time. <laughs> but again, I want to thank you both so much for giving us so much of your time this evening and to your students and the to all the people who joined us this evening. Unfortunately, we are gonna to have to end it there, but you all have been a phenomenal audience. Thank you so much yeah, for asking absolutely. so many great questions. Uh, we do a lot of webinars and you know this, this, this amount of curiosity about the programs and the, and the faculty and everything is always lovely to see. So please feel free to follow up and reach out if you have questions about the department or the program. You have these fine folks next to me. If it's a more broad question about like housing or financial aid, um, anything like that, uh, please feel free to email me instead and I can make sure your questions get answered. Uh, if you would like to learn more, you obviously can get a lot out of the website, but also we have some more of these coming up. So if you'd like to learn from some of our alumni from the College of Natural Science and Mathematics, that will be going on later in uh, March. And then April is going to be an exploration into some more departments like this. I believe, Heather, you're also on that one as well in the Department of Environmental Science. And then the last one that we're going to do is more about student or so there's a lot of student organizations specific to the sciences. Uh, our, our young scientists are very active in the community on campus. So it's a way for you to explore some of the opportunities you have in more of a student organization setting outside of the research world. But with that being said, I hope everybody has a great rest of your evening. Thank you again to all of our presenters and go Rockets. Go Rockets.